Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hi, I'm Debbie Weiss, and I'm here to help you navigate the cesspool that is middle-aged dating. And here's one way to navigate that cesspool. Don't date. Feel free not to jump in. I've been hearing from a lot of women around my age, middle-aged women, who are simply very happy being single. And that is a great choice. You know, when I was younger, um, being single, I think, was viewed as an interim state. At some point, you would get married. At some point, you would have children. And that's so narrow, and it's so ridiculous. And as the patriarchy is thankfully crashing around us, I think those views are getting dispelled. Um, but you know what? There was certainly a view of, of um, being married as a certain kind of currency. You build a home together. You have a stable home. Your husband is a reflection of yourself. I remember uh, joining a synagogue at one point, and a lot of people were very into what your husband did. At one point, I was very into that. My late husband was a software architect. That didn't mean I was. And this idea of a currency of being married sort of, or being partnered, I think makes sense at a time when women couldn't vote and they couldn't own property. And maybe we needed a guy to help, you know, kill the woolly mammoths that were amassing outside the cave. It's also really dealt uh, very much, I think, enmeshed in our own mythology, right? We grew up with fairy tales. The princess is asleep or otherwise in peril. And the prince comes and kisses her and takes her away to his kingdom. This is not the world of the middle-aged woman. Besides that, let's look at it this way. What if the prince has bad breath? And what if the princess has her own damn kingdom she doesn't want to leave? We don't need these schmucks. It's a myth. For example, I have a girlfriend. She's a, a, a university professor. She is amazing. She is smart. She is well-traveled. She speaks up for herself. I'm just going to give you an aside. In fact, when she's dated sometimes, she's met men when they say to her, well, you really have a lot of opinions, don't you? And I thought that was a good thing. But one thing she does feel obligated to do is when people talk to her, particularly relatives sometimes, is to say that, yes, she's looking for a partner. She just hasn't met the right person yet. Yes, she'd be open. But really, she isn't. She's a lot happier on her own. And of all the things and the glass ceiling she's broken and the TED talk she's given, the one thing she can't do is say, hell, I'm single and proud of it. That doesn't seem to be an option. I read a lot on Medium and I'm reading a lot of great writers, women who are talking about how they are being single as the new norm. And it is. We're looking at a lot of things. Uh, women's independence. We're looking at the education gap. Men aren't getting as educated as women. Um, in that way, they're not keeping up economically. We still do have a huge wage gap. Let me tell you about my days as a lawyer when I saw what some of the men were making. But, it's, but we are being able to own property, and women are advancing in the workplace sometimes. And so we're talking about, you know, the laziness of men, the difficulties, and misandry, misandry in general. And they're speaking out against things like single supplements on vacations. When they go to visit somebody in a house, they always get the sofa because they're just one person. All kinds of assumptions about what they want or that they're not happy as they are. But really, they are. And again, I feel like women have were raised with a double-edged sword. We have to both be successful and attractive to men. And I don't really think we have to anymore. Feel free to... Speak up if you're single with no shame. But if you do want to date, please love yourself as you are. You don't have to change to find love. You know, I was hiking the other day with a woman and she was just vibrant. You know, as she was hiking along with her flowing hair and her bright eyes and her beautiful smile. She said, yeah, I do want to date. And I believe she did. But I need to lose 15 pounds and I need to get a new wardrobe. And then I'm going to, you know, look into it. But she really didn't need to do these things. I mean, she had a beautiful, functional body that had just hiked seven miles. That's got to be good enough. And I felt bad that she felt she had to change to find love. You know, it's like those wedding pictures, right? When women get married, people get married sometimes. They lose all this weight. 
they get all this makeup done, they get totally airbrushed, and they are never gonna look this way again. So I think it's best to just go with the way you are now. You know, dating is gonna come, it's gonna go, people get online, they get offline, they get in and out of relationships. And most of these idiots aren't gonna work out anyway, so you need to integrate them into your life as is. Or in the words of my grandmother, bubbla eat. These guys aren't worth it. And if somebody cares about 10 pounds, screw them. We're grown-ups. There are far higher priorities than a hip to waist ratio. And I have to tell you that when I've met people who are couples older in life, and I see a lot of them on the hiking trails and downtown where I live, you know, the reasons that they talk about why they love their partners aren't because they're particularly stunning. You know, one uh, guy talked about his part, uh, new girlfriend who was a hike leader. He said, you see, I really liked her because she had a head on her shoulders as she directed, you know, 30 of us through a whole bunch of different trailheads. And another guy, this couple couples, um, you know, they were unremarkable middle-aged looking folk, but they had bright eyes and big smiles. And he said, I fell in love with her because she's so real. And the way they looked at each other, it just brought me such joy. So if you do decide that you want to date, one, you don't have to to please anybody else, but two, find somebody who loves the real you. You don't have to change for anybody. I'm Debbie, and I hope this helped navigate the cesspool that is middle-aged dating. Until next time. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.